has this greenhouse door opener right here. A greenhouse window hinge. I had to get the biggest one I could find in order to open this lid on this thing. But when you ain't got your cylinder in there, like I said, you store that in your ice box when it's in the summer and ain't in use. That way your lid won't stay open all the time. But right up under here where it screws, it's got a plug that when you ain't got the hinge in there, you screw your little plug, and that just keeps dirt divers or anything from going up in your cylinder. Now, the cylinder on this one, it's hard to pull up, and it's made like that so it'll pull your lid back down. I don't know if it's spring-loaded or gas-loaded like a shock. It's hard to raise up. And you hold that up and you screw this cylinder in here. And you can adjust this cylinder. I start out with it screwed all the way in. So it open the door all the way up. But you can adjust it by turning it just like that. And I won't know how to adjust it where I want it until I, it's cold and I got my little heat lamps on. And I have it adjusted to where to start opening when it gets about 70 degrees. And then the hotter it gets, the further it opens that door up. After I screwed that in there, what I'm doing is pulling that hinge back down. And I'm going to adjust it to where I feel it touch it. Just starts to open it when I screw it in there. And then we're going to give it a test run by putting a, I'm going to turn these heat lamps on. And I don't know if y'all see my heat lamps, but I got a heat lamp. And it's just, I ain't got them permanently in here because once I get out of this cold frame box here, I got a little, another mini, mini greenhouse. It's, it's bigger than this. I can set these in it. And how they work, they're my heat bulbs, and they're not lights. They just, they don't put on no light, but they just put off heat. And then I got a thermostat that I wired up. And again, I'll look back, if I can find the video where I hook this up, I attach it above. But this is a comfort zone controller, like you can just get it Lowe's or something or other. Now, I usually get me a thermometer and put in here, and I can get it to where it comes on. Just say once it gets down to about whatever you want it to come on at 50 degrees, you have it set to where them heat will come on when it get, the temperature drops to 50, 50 degrees. Like I said, I just have this hanging on a wire because I take this out and use it in the other mini greenhouse sometimes. I always just leave my plug in here because if I don't leave it in here, I'll lose it. I'll take me a zip tie here in a moment and I'll just zip tie it there where it, where it won't fall off and I'll lose it. But I'm finna plug this up. I have it to where I just hang it out the door because the door don't shut and totally seal off. And I'm gonna shut the lid on it and plug it up. First, I'm going to turn the temperature all the way up so we can watch it and make sure it's working because this has been sitting all summer. So you got to make sure your hinge ain't nothing went bad with your hinge because that hinge was supposed to pull back down while ago. I pushed it up, but it didn't pull back down. So we got to test her out and make sure she's going to work.
Now guys, right now it's actually 62 degrees outside. But this hinge cylinder has been in the ice box, so it's cold. Matter of fact, it's just before freezing temperature in that outside ice box where I had it stored. First, before I forget, I'm gonna zip tie this plug. Because if I don't, I'll lose it. Zip tie it right there and it'll be there for when I need it next time. Then I'm going to plug my little heat lamps up. I'm calling them heat lamps, but again, they don't put off no light. You can buy just the heat lamp bulbs that don't put off light. We're going to turn them on. I got my inflared heat gun here. The temperature on that styrofoam walls is just what that thermometer said, 62 degrees. But them heat bulbs right there is already reading 214 degrees. I got them turned wide open. You hit it on the edge, it reads about 150. The lowest I got here is about, well, now it's reading 188. That in there in the center, I'm getting anywhere from 188 to 250 degrees on them bulbs, heat lamps. So we're going to shut this. And I got a little latch here to keep the wind from blowing it open that latches it to the bracket that's attached to that cylinder. Because see, if you want to open it up to do something, you can't raise it up attached to your cylinder. You got to unlatch it and raise the door up by itself. You can't, open, you can't pull your cylinder left up and down. So we're going to let that run a little while, and we're going to see if it starts lifting up. Because that little hinge right there, I can't rightly remember the price of it, but it, I know it was over a hundred bucks. Was it worth it? I don't know. It's one of them things when I get something in my mind, going to build something, I want to follow through with it. I started out with like a $30 hinge on it. And guys, it wasn't stout enough to open the door. It only opened it just a little bit. Now this one here, when I first put it on it, it'll open it all the way up. Or I'm saying all the way up. Not all the way up like I had it open, but it'll raise it way on up to where it's just open. But another thing, I start a lot of my seeds indoors. And then after they start growing, see, I can bring them out and put them in this, no matter what the temperature is outside. I roll it right around here where I can keep it plugged in and watch it. And another thing I thought about doing, I got that mini greenhouse, but if you got a mini a greenhouse of any size, you could have something like this inside that greenhouse to start stuff in when it's extremely cold if you don't want to start stuff indoors. So I'm going to try to get some more use out of it this year. Here in just a couple of days, I'm going to be starting probably some brassicas and stuff. I always start earlier than I need to, but it's kind of the fun of my gardening. I just can't wait to get started again. Now you can see it don't seal all the way. I mean, it's a crack there about a half inch. I actually had some foam glued on there, but it come off, and I never did put it back on. I'll probably glue some more on there before I start using it. But it's going to take it a while, like I said. It's going to have to get hot in there so that cylinder just come out of the freezer. But we're going to give it some time and then we'll get back see how she works.
In the meantime, I'm going to go around here and show y'all my other little greenhouse. My mini, my mini, mini greenhouse, I call it. Now, guys, this is my mini, mini, mini greenhouse, I call it. And it's actually three foot wide. Six foot long. And to the peak of it, it's three foot tall. Now last year when I had my mini greenhouse, my portable one, which y'all see again, I, I pull it around here. I have it to where I can move it out there, but I don't know if I'm going to pull it around here. I'm going to pull it somewhere up here closer to the house. But I had this mini greenhouse set up inside it. That way, during all that cold, cold, cold weather, I put my plants in there, and I took them little heat lamps out of that cold frame, and I put in here. And all I had to do is just keep this heated, not my whole little greenhouse. Now, I'm finna put the cover on it, but what you see is sitting on here this year. I had these pellets, and I put some ground fabric over them. Until I get to where I want this, if I, if I don't want this put in my greenhouse, I'm going to leave it set on these pellets. That way, I, if I got anything sitting in there and I want to move it, I can just come up here with my tractor and run my forks on it, pick it up, and move it where I want it while I had to get stuff out. So that's, that's what I started preparing a couple of days ago. And then I stopped and never did get back to it. But now I'm finna put my little cover on here. You purchase these little mini greenhouses here, and I'll attach a link in the description below where you can get them. But if every year if you'll take them, I actually, this is just stuck together. Ain't nothing glued together or anything. I take mine apart, take my cover off, I roll it up, and I put it in that cold frame for storage. So if you leave this out in the summer, your little cover here ain't gonna last. The sun's gonna mess it up. But you can get several years out of here if you don't leave it set up all summer. And probably what I'm gonna do, guys, I'm probably going to put this back in my greenhouse. Even though I done built this little platform, I, I still think I'm going to put this back in my greenhouse to start out with during the cold temperatures. But it's got little ties that you tie that down to the bottom. And it's got two doors. It just unzips and you can fold that back. And that's a lot of convenience. And you can put a lot of stuff in there on seedling trays starting growing in your seeding trays. I mean, three foot by six foot, that'll, that'll hold several trays you starting out with or even when you don't start seeding them up to bigger pots the average the average homeowner garden gardener could start his seeds indoors and the average one this is all he would need and fix you up a way to heat it a little well i used a little electric heater some last year when it was so cold we had all that ice and snow I'm going to zip it back. And I'm going to flip it up on the edge like this. And I'm actually going to take some zip ties because some of my ties right here is broke off but you want to 
gonna make sure you get it pulled all the way down to where it ain't no cracks under it. And see like that and right there. To, then broke my little ties. So I'm gonna go get me some zip ties. And this is plastic. And I'm gonna take me a nail and heat it. Punch me a hole right through there, melt a hole through there. Cause if you try to cut it, you're gonna tear it. If you melt a hole through it, we can zip tie it on there. So that's what I'm finna do right now. So now guys, I'm gonna take my little torch here. I'm going to heat me up a nail, red hot, and poke me some holes to zip tie it through. Now if you're just setting this straight on the ground and not on a platform, what I did, I took some ground staples that's made for that ground fabric you know they like eight you can get them 12 inches long and you can put them right over this bottom pipe and put you some ground staples in your ground and that'll keep the wind for anything from flipping that over usually if it gets high enough wind to flip it over after you put about eight ground staples in there you got more damage to be worried about than this your greenhouse flipped over them ground staples hold pretty good when you put plenty of them in there. Guys, we've been out to move this little operation around there under the, where the other greenhouse is. It's starting to rain. Check the temperature in here again. It's up to 80 degrees shooting at walls. 72 degrees. Somewhere around 70 to 75, 80 degrees average. The thermometer in there is saying 72 degrees. But my hinge ain't started opening yet. Now the hinge itself is saying 65 on the outside. We're going to give it some more time. Maybe it's because it's been in the ice box. Maybe whatever's inside that cylinder. I don't know if it's some kind of gel. I don't know what's inside it, but... we we'll give it some more time. I might put my electric heater in there to get it real hot. I got to make sure my hinge is going to work. So we're going to get back to what we was doing over here. I think that's going to be enough. Guys, all this rain is helping me out big time. At the beginning of the video, when y'all seen me blending my beds up, all of that wasn't caught on video, but I done put a lot of rabbit poop and chicken, I mean, uh, I done put a lot of rabbit poop, a lot of quail poop, mixed my greens and my leaves in there, and I just had it turned over a couple times with a fork. And then at the beginning of this video, which was yesterday, I took that little tiller and mixed it up. Now we're gonna get this rain, get good, everything good and wet. A few days later, I go turn it again, and that's composting that down. That's just making that that soil great. It ought to, it ought to do some good gardening this year. I'm really expecting my best gardening since I got these raised beds started this year, because I'm just now getting my soil prepared up the way it needs to be. 
in the beginning I done that I had some compost but some of the soil I put in them beds in the beginning wasn't that great especially down toward the bottom and all of them raised beds out there for some of you new ones that ain't been following along and watching me I got sticks, logs, all that down in the bottom of them beds. And then I put dirt over the top of it. And after I put dirt over the top of it, see, as years go by, all that logs and stuff start rotting and hold your moisture and stuff down in there. And as it rots and settles down, you just it keep adding compost and soil on top. That's why I like them beds I got out there that's made out of that corrugated plastic pipe. Because them there last a lifetime. They ain't never going to rot away. Or some of them muddings I got made out of tin. Eventually, you know, they'll rust away. And I have to redo them. But one of these days, I think I'm going to buy me a gallon of paint and get my spray gun. And I'm going to spray some of them. I mean, I know they'll still rust from the inside out, but I've been wanting to do that just to make them look a little neater out there. Guys, there's no telling how many zip ties I go through in a year. I use these things for everything. I should have been zip tying as I was poking these holes. Now I'm having trouble finding holes. I can't see them in this clear plastic. But I'm zip tying it this year. Them ties last year, they, like I said, a lot of them didn't come off, but they didn't have enough ties. They only had a tie on each corner and in the middle. They didn't have none, like I'm spacing them out here. I was wanting to pull my greenhouse up here today. But we done got enough rain last night and this morning, I... If I try to go out there with a tractor and pull it up here, I'm going to rut my yard up. I don't want to do that yet. So y'all have to see the final setup later on. All right, guys, there she is. Should have zip tied it last year because it just works better. Matter of fact, I'm finna put a zip tie right here to keep this center strap that the door's zipped to keep it centered. But guys, I just made this little cheap greenhouse pretty decent little greenhouse just by adding a dollar's worth of zip ties. But see now that'll hold that to where I can zip it all the way down. And that won't be moving. Like I said, you can open your windows up. You can actually roll them up and they got ties. Always just flip mine back, especially when it's inside my greenhouse like it was last year. Ain't no wind inside the mini greenhouse, so the flaps stay open. Then during them cold nights, I come closed it, turn my little heat lamps on in there, and it keeps it heated inside that. So like I said, that's a pretty good little mini greenhouse that the average homeowner 
can start all their plants outside and like I said you ain't got to rig up heat lamps you can just use a little electric heater you can just use a little electric heater something like that right there and it's got a thermostat controlled and it'll keep that warm in there and on a real cold night, just have your old tarp or something to throw over it, and that just helps keep it that much warmer without the wind going through your cracks and all that kind of good stuff. But now we got to get back to our cold frame here. This hinge should have done started opening up. Now I'm hoping this hinge ain't messed up, and I didn't get but one year's use out of a hundred and something dollar hinge. It's almost 80 degrees in there. And that hinge ain't working. Maybe I need to screw it on down. That don't seem to be working neither. I'm going to take the hinge back out. I mean, I'm going to take the cylinder back out now. See, guys, it ain't even trying to shoot out. But then again, the cylinder's only saying it's 67 degrees. I stored it in the refrigerator and it got too cold. So next, I'm going to screw it back in there. And we're going to get it hot in this box. I'm going to put it in that electric heater in there along with them heat lamps and see if we can get it hot enough to make this cylinder heat up and maybe that gel or whatever's inside that cylinder kind of froze up and ain't wanting to release yet. I may have shouldn't have stored it in the ice box. We're going to put that electric heater right there under that cylinder. And I'm going to shut this. And we're going to see if it'll get it hot enough to break it loose. And then we'll get back again. Alright guys, with just a couple of minutes with that electric heater in there sitting right under that cylinder it made that fluid or whatever's inside that cylinder go on and break loose and you can see the door opening it's done opened up five inches so i'm gonna leave the heater in there and we're gonna let it see how high to open make sure it's working right and uh, the thermometer i got sitting in there is saying it's 90 degrees in the box like I said, I got the heater sitting right under that cylinder because I figured after having that in the ice box all summer long, that gel and fluid just done was too cold in there. It needed it needed to get hotter to make it start functioning right. The little heat lamps in there are still showing over 400 degrees. Matter of fact, both of them's around 425. But well, that right there saying 485 when I hit it dead in the center. Like I said, it just varies where you're hitting it on that bulb. It going from now it's going from 350. That one right there was up around 480. Just according to where you hit at on that bulb, I guess it, and that heat bulb's got them heat coils in it. I guess if you hit dead on one of them coils, it's hotter than if you hit off to the side on the glass. I don't know if y'all can see it on camera, but it's slowly, just a steady, slowly opening.
And guys, if it wasn't for me having an electric heater in there, see, it wouldn't even open that high. Because I'm going to have my thermostat set on the heat lamps to where they don't come on till it gets 50 degrees. And until it gets cold enough, them heat lamps is keeping it hotter in there. It's just going to stay 50 degrees with the door closed. Then if it's sun comes out and it starts getting hotter, the heat lamps goes off and the hotter it gets. I mean, the door sometimes, according to your temperature outside in the sun, it don't need much of a crack for enough air to keep the temperature cool enough. So it may never open that, that high unless it's in the summer. Well, I ain't going to be using it when it gets that hot. But you gotta realize this box ain't but five foot long, 30 inches wide. The front's about a foot deep and the back's about 20 inches deep. So it's, it's only made for when it's really cold. It's kinda, it's really hard to use it in Louisiana. Like I said, our weather goes from cold to hot, cold to hot, cold to hot. But I'm going to keep that heater on it. I want to make it open as far as it'll go just to make that cylinder work. And after it opens as far as I think it's going to open, then I'll turn the heat off. I'll take the heat off everything and let it close back. And guys, another thing I use, like I said, when I have this inside my mini greenhouse, and I'm wanting to start plants. If I'm wanting to start them in this, I can put my heat pads on the bottom down there and then I have a grow light. Now guys, I got a video on grow lights. You ain't got to go buy them expensive, what they so-called grow lights. You can go to your hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, actually Walmart had these, and you can buy you some of these lights right out of the hardware store. For a lot less money, and they do the same thing. But I have it hooked on these chains to where I can adjust it, which I get a little longer chain. If I start out seed starting, I'll lower it on down. But then as the plants grow, see, I can just raise my chain up, raise my light up. So as y'all can tell, I'm slowly getting set up. I'm ready to get started. Now that door there, I think, is going to be about as high as it's going to open. Yep, it ain't moving no more, guys, as far as it's going to open. <laughs> but but if it gets hot enough to make that door open that way, you ain't going to raise no kind of plants in there unless it's a desert plant, I promise you. So it opened that door. What if you call it down there at the bottom? That's 22 and a half inches it made it come open. We're going to set the little heater back out. Turn the heat lamps off. And outside right now, it's still about 62 degrees. So guys, you see, with that heater was running, and the heat lamps was running, that the thermometer in there is showing 71 degrees with them heaters running when that door opened that wide open. It's 62 degrees outside. So that's why when you do something, hook you something up with heat, you need a thermostat on it so your heat will go off. If you don't, you're going to be running electricity, heating, and your door is open, letting it out. So you got to get it adjusted so when the door starts opening, your heat goes off. Because there's a, there's a fine line in there to where your door might stay closed, but your heat's off, but it's keeping it on that temperature before the door starts opening. You adjust that with your heat thermostat, whether you're using a heater, and also by screwing this in. 
Now I screw mine all the way in because I want my door to open as soon as possible. And I can't rightly remember at this time when that's supposed to start opening. I think it's supposed to start opening at 60 degrees if I remember right. That's been over a year ago, and I can't remember when I purchased the hinge, what it said on the directions. But if you don't want it to open it till it gets 80 degrees, you just unscrew your cylinder back out. But like I said, I screw mine all the way in because I want mine to start opening early because I know if the sun's shining, this box really gets hot. So we're going to let her sit and see, see how long I'm going to get me a measurement. Right there, that's 22 and a quarter. We're going to see how long it takes before it starts coming back down. And it's 62 degrees outside, it may not come here. It may not come back down. I may have to unscrew my cylinder to get it to close. It ought to come down some, but it, it might stay open. All right, guys, this done got up to 79 degrees outside. The sun popped out after the little rain shower. So this is as far as this fella's going to come back down at 79 degrees. Inside the box... The same temperature as it is outside, which is between 79 and 80 degrees. So that's how she works. At 80 degrees, that's how it's going to be open. As it cools off tonight, it'll close. I'll sit here and watch it. Test it out a couple of nights, and as it cools off, tomorrow night it's supposed to get cold again. Like I said, it'll be in the upper 20s at night. I get my heat all adjusted before I go to planting anything. But right now, I think we're finna go out here and get our greenhouse and pull it up here closer to the house. I'm probably finna make a few little ruts in my yard, but I have to fix them later. I can't wait. I'm ready, I'm ready to get all this stuff set up. I'm, I'm, I'm gunning to go. I'm ready, I'm ready for next year's gardening. Getting bored. So let's go out here and see if we can get this greenhouse moved up here somewhere. I ain't sure where I want to put it. I like it where it's sitting out there on the back side of the garden. But that's too far to run an extension cord. I don't know. Let me go see. If, let me go check my cords out. I might run a cord and leave it out there. I'm going to go see what kind of cords I got. One day I'm going to run me some electricity out to my garden area with my chickens and rabbits and quails and greenhouse and get me a little garden shop put up out there. Right now I'm just using cords. can see I decided to leave the greenhouse sitting way out here I'll just run a cord out here because this only be a couple of months and I didn't want to pull my greenhouse up there but now you can see I set my mini greenhouse or my mini mini greenhouse inside my mini cow panel greenhouse now again why I'm doing that well, I'm going to start some of my seeds indoors, and I'm going to start some of my seeds in that cold frame, and I'm going to start, after they get started in the house, then I can move them out here. And guys, on them extra cold nights, I can shut these lids.
And if I need that little electric heater, I can put that little electric heater in here. And it's thermostat controlled. And it won't run very much inside this, inside this. Instead of trying to heat this whole thing up. I'm going to try to time this to where when they come out of here, I ain't got that much room over here, but I got room enough I can put me a table over here and set plants. But I'm going to have it try to time it this year if the weather act, if the weather acts right to when they come out of here. Of course, I had to take them in and out and get them hardened off first, but then I go plant them straight in there. I ain't going to have this thing full of plants this tall, I hope. But I'm set up out here. I'm going to bring y'all in here and you can get a closer look. And guys, this little cow panel greenhouse here is made. It's approximately 8 by 12, and I have a video I try to attach of me building this. And I actually have mine on metal skids to where if I wanted to, I could pull it up there closer to the house. Plus, it keeps the wood off the ground, so it ought to last me quite a few years. Back here on the back, I got a screened-in window, and it's on, it's on one of them greenhouse hinges. This is one of the little hinges I tried first on that cold frame. But you can see that window opens up, and then the door has a window. Now, in reality, when I built this, I wished I'd have made the sides roll up on it. It gets hot in here. It's hot in here right now. But I also I set a box fan right here. And it can suck air through the window on the door and suck it through here to keep it ventilated also. But this is my little setup. I can get out here, seed me up some stuff. Like I said, I'm thinking about building me another shelf. I don't know how I want to do that yet. I can set some on the ground and build me another shelf up and then maybe a short shelf up higher than that i think i got enough stuff i can do that so that I might get out here and piddle on that i could do that one of these days when it's cold get inside here and work but y'all see i got my light set up i have my little heater in there and if I get done with the cold frame, I can take that thermostatic controlled heat bulbs and put out here in this instead of having to use a heater. Either way, I have done this in the house and I just ended up with a whole room in a house full of plants. And I really don't like that myself. And I know it costs a little more for me to do it this way and heat out here on these cold nights, but I'd just rather do that than in the house. Right now, I got a thermometer hanging here. And it's 92 degrees in this little greenhouse. That's what I'm saying. Here in Louisiana, it's hard. It's hard to do something with a greenhouse because the weather goes from so cold to so hot. And that's why I wish when I'd have built this, I'd have fixed the roll-up sides on it. But I didn't, so I'm going to try to manage with what I got. And the next time I have to replace the plastic on it, that's when I'm going to come up with me a way I can do some roll-up sides. At least roll up about three foot on each side. That's a way to be real ventilated or to help out a lot. But I got my seed starting stuff. I brought it up here. I had it stored up under my tractor shed. I went on and brought that out here. But that pretty much got this. Okay guys, now the front's done moved past and it's turning cold. And this afternoon, now it's done, you can see the door's almost all the way closed. It's still open about an inch. And the temperature is exactly 60 degrees. So I need to loosen this off. Closed. And if I have them heaters 
old and it gets cold when they come home when it gets 60 degrees in there it ought to start opening back up at 60 degrees But I ain't gonna turn the heaters on because I ain't got nothing to do, but what I am gonna do is watch it. Tomorrow, well tomorrow the high ain't supposed to get to 60 degrees, but the next few days as the weather changes again, I'll watch it and make sure I got it set to where to open and be closed at 60 and open it, starts opening at 60. And I think that ought to be pretty good. 